live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillis. Welcome back to Excel London, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. And we're here for three days covering HPE Discover 2016. Peter Schrader is here as the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the ProLiant Server Group at HPE. And Nick East is the co-founder and CEO of Zinstra. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Yeah, thanks what is this little guy? This little guy is what we call Easy Connect. Let me uh, tell you a little bit about what right. Easy Connect is all about. So, you know, we have committed ourselves completely, HPE, to a hybrid infrastructure as the solution of choice that's going to lead basically all of our customers into the next generation of IT. Making it simple. Making it well, simple. Well, you certainly made it small. Well, <laughs> so what we've done is we've developed Synergy and other reliant solutions for large enterprise customers, um, but there's a group of customers, small, medium business customers, the uh, education, schools, as well as some remote office, branch office for large enterprise who don't have the IT sophistication, the staff um, don't have the capital to spend on a, on a complete solution like Synergy. This is where Easy, Easy Connect comes in. Easy Connect is a converged system. It's compute, storage, and networking all in this really cool small form factor that stores your data and your applications locally or it will connect to the cloud, either a public cloud or uh, your own private cloud. So this is a true hybrid IT solution for the SMB or for the education customer, as well as, a, as I mentioned, remote office, branch office. And it's a subscription basis, uh, you it, manage it for the customer. Absolutely, right. so this is another innovation for us at HPE. We actually are wrapping the hardware, managed software from our partner Zinstra, as well as the services in one monthly subscription, a consumption model. So if I want, to, if I want a, a, an exchange server uh, there and, and a SharePoint server, uh, you're going to configure that all for me? That is exactly right. I, you, you couldn't have said it better because that's the type of application that this thing is wholly uh, suited for. So Nick, this, your company developed this, yep. obviously integrating components from HPE technology. So tell us more about Zinstra and how you came up with this. Sure, so, so we, uh, we provide the virtualization platform that sits on the, on the server and the cloud management platform. Um, and, and I guess the pain points we were looking to address, you know, I, I'll give you some examples from people who've come here at the show to look at deploying Easy Connect. So, you know, an IT manager has 150 sites to manage or 50 sites to manage um, and needs a critical mass of some IT. He sorted out his, his data center, he's, he's got his cloud strategy in play, but there's something he needs on site, it may be just you know, classic DNS, DHCP access, uh, needs to be able to run Active Directory for authentication, uh, file and print services for the office, and exactly as you mentioned, we had somebody say exactly that yesterday, you know, I have a small SharePoint or SAP implementation. Um, so what our software does is it, is it lets them cookie cutter every site. One site, five site, a hundred sites, a thousand sites. They can cookie cutter the site, they ship this out, they connect it to the one, it lights up in our cloud management platform, and from there, the IT manager can do everything that they need across all of those sites. So the, the concept is to make it super simple for them, and if they're a stretched IT team, they don't need skilled IT resources on site, they can retain their core IT skills locally around their DC, or the partner can run that for them. So they're, they're, they're running one view, they want to manage it with one view, where do you fit into that equation? We, we integrate with the, with the one view guys. Um, so, I mean, I think the thing that's super cool about this appliance in particular, is we actually worked with the design team, the HP server design team, hand in glove. So the reason this is such a, a small guy is that we've been able to kind of cost optimize access to ILO, access to OneView, access to the management tools, and make sure that the platform we've built here has everything that those sites need, it's just right for those sites, uh, in conjunction with our software and the rest of the HPE software portfolio. And, and you said you developed a virtualization platform right. for this? What, what is that? Is so, it? Well, it's, so it's a virtualization infrastructure sitting on top of, uh, of uh, open, source, uh, open source end server. We can use other hypervisors, but the important thing about the virtualization infrastructure is really how you lay this out to be remote managed. So, so classically in a data center, you run single purpose virtual machines to run a workload. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned a, you know, like a SharePoint workload. You run that in one virtual machine. On the site, it's much harder to keep and maintain all of that virtualization infrastructure. If you're running lots of sites, it's difficult to keep them all consistent. 
right? So you have 20 sites. This one starts to look different from the other one. And then you have a maintenance nightmare because you don't have an IT guy on that site. You have to ship people out and everything looks unique. Uh, everything's different. So we, we make sure that that virtualization platform, when it's set up and it's structured and it's configured, it looks identical everywhere. It's like having a distributed data center. Is this, a, is this inherently a more secure platform than a remote office server? 100% correct, for lots of reasons. Um, one of the reasons it's more secure is exactly that infrastructure, right? So the attack surface is, is, much, uh, is much smaller for any of those uh, virtual machines. But also, um, we have in line as part of it, we actually have a, optionally, you can add a network gateway and firewall, just tick the box and it'll spin it up, so we can do in, uh, inline AV. Um, and and it, it automatically, securely connects itself into the management cloud that you can run it from. Now if I, if I want to upgrade, if I, if I run out of capacity, I need to, to uh, upgrade my server, how will you manage that? You can ship another one. So the, the, the you can, um, uh, there's a, you can't see the back end, there's, a, there's a, a separate port, you can plug another one into it and run them in a high availability cluster mode, active, active cluster mode. So, so what that will do is it'll let you use both systems, but it also means if one of them uh, fails, if there's a uh, failure of power supply, it'll fail over to the other. So imagine this is a similar discussion you have with, with customers. You had me at simple, and right. we talk about the business benefits and so forth, and at some point somebody's going to ask, what's inside? Right. What do I get? <laughs> yeah. you know, right. How much horsepower, how much storage, you know, what kind of networking? Tell us what's, uh, what's inside. Sure. Okay, so, so there's, uh, there's two models. There's a base and the premium model. Uh, the, the base model is uh, th uh, 32 gig of memory. The, uh, the premium model is, is 64. It has uh, uh, SSD accelerated uh, disks. You can go up to 24 terabytes. There's actually a disk expansion unit yeah. you can plug on the back. Um, and it'll say tiered storage. So for things like um, SQL Server applications, um, we, we found some of the customers who are running on much bigger server arrays have, have run in their, in their labs to just make sure that the performance is okay. And it, it absolutely flies because of the, the SSD acceleration. And, and if you know a little bit about the, I'm sure you do about the storage uh, uh, infrastructure inside, so it actually runs a full uh, copy on write ZFS file system, which means if you do add more, then those disks are just available to all of the virtual machines that you're running. So you make a synchronous copy locally, uh, and then you asynchronously, I was going to ask how you protect it, then you'll yeah, trickle yeah. that up to the cloud. Back, back or, back or, either way. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, you can tick the box, check the box and you can say public cloud, encrypted public cloud backup, it'll encrypt it on the box, stream it, it has, as part of the networking, it has quality of service parameters built in, so it will only use the available upstream bandwidth that you need to do that backup, and it will back up into the choice of public clouds, typically people are choosing uh, Azure, or into your OpenStack uh, data center. But we do have a set of customers who are asking for more compute power. Right. So uh, we've recently uh, launched a bigger tower, the uh, ML110, um, and as as we scale and as our customers scale, I'm sure we will continue to scale the compute power to meet the needs of, of all the customers here. Now, you've been on the market about eight months with this. In fact, you and I talked back in April. We did, you're right. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're uh, right. I, yeah. I just found the story right now. <laughs> uh, so you've been about, about eight months on the market with this. Right. How is it selling? What, the, kind of, what kind of volume are you talking this one, about? Um, real quick, Nick. So we actually didn't get the product out and into the customer's hands until June and July, just to be okay. um, so yeah, fair months. to, yeah, fair. Um, we have uh, we have got significant momentum behind this product, uh, and what we've seen so far is that the majority of the sales, which are just UK based and US based right now, because we're trying to get this right, we're trying to build the model that's going to be repeatable around the world. Um, but we've seen significant interest and have sold subscriptions into uh, the education space as well as the the small SMB retail space. But we have um, a huge pipeline that is built around not only are those, those education customers, but lots of large enterprise customers. Retail customers, convenience store customers, those that have a lot of remote office branch offices. So we're, we're thrilled about that. So you've got a pipeline, why do you have a pipeline? I mean, do, are you capacity constrained? No, of, of, so everybody needs to have a proof of concept before they're going to rip and replace 6,000 stores. Because you're intentionally sort of throttling the rollout then. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. We, because we don't have the resources right now as a team, we're trying to incubate this within HPE so we can keep it alive and well. And so we want to make sure that we build the model correctly um, in the US and in the UK and then we'll scale. How did you do your TAM analysis for this? You take like IDC price bands or something, but you got the subscription model. How big is the market for this? The, the market is enormous for this. Right. And so um, it, we've had to throttle it back significantly, but you can imagine 
So 40% of the market is small, medium business. But then you've got you know, maybe another 10 to 15% that is um, specifically remote office, branch office, large enterprise customers. Another 20% is education. And then you've got telcos and service providers who could sell this product into their customer base as well. So the, the, mar the market is enormous. But the, so TAM's got to be tens of billions it's of dollars. It's tens of billions right? of dollars. Right. Okay. Absolutely. This, go ahead. And, and, and Zinstra is a systems integrator, you're a value-added reseller, you're a technology company? No, no, we're, we're a software company. Okay. Yeah, uh, we're a venture-backed uh, software company. So, so you know, our, our background as an organization is in making you know, bulletproof software platforms that go out into the field and they just work. Uh, and you don't need a lot of skills to, to run them. So you know, we've, uh, the heritage of the DNA of the team is all about making sure you can deliver infrastructure remotely and you can always manage it consistently from one place. As I recall from our earlier discussion, this is a channel play, right? HPE is not selling the, the product that your channel This is, is an absolute channel play and um, it's a perfect channel play for our managed service provider partners because um, they can, as Nick mentioned earlier, they can provide that service, that a service, that remote office service, um, and they can also sell curated software applications. So for them, anyhow, it's a real true value added proposition. So is this, a, is this an on-ramp for your conventional resellers to get into the MSP business, or the, is it the other way around? Well, we'd like to think it's an on-ramp for our traditional resellers to get into the MSP space because you know it's this still is, a box. Yeah, this it's still a box, but it's it's a great proof point in in, a, in their ability to sell a solution. And then again, there's different consumption models that they'll be able to sell. Whether we ha we have the monthly subscription, but we also you can uh, you know have the traditional uh, capex model as well. Have we talked price? We haven't talked price yet. I we have think. not talked price. So if I can buy it as as, as infra capex infrastructure. So give us some rough. Sort of ranges. You know, so so the, the price varies on, on the size of the unit, mm -hmm. base unit or, or premium unit, and then on things like the amount of backup that you use. But you know, ballpark, you could be talking, you know, on a, on a, a for a, a three year contract, anything from six to fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, for, for the full for the for full, the full, for the full service, including backup over those three years. And typically, what we see, so we have, you know, we have down in, uh, in a number of the booths here. We got some reference videos of the first customers who've deployed this and the experiences they've had. And typically, what they're saying is they're getting, you know, between thirty and fifty percent uh, TCO reduction uh, compared with how they would normally operate this type of solution. And that's largely, we would think, coming from just not having to have people in suits managing. That's exactly right. That's exa it's oper it's operating sure. costs. Operating yeah. and, then, costs. and then you'll, and you'll swap truck out. Truck rolls out to sites. Yeah. You'll swap out yeah, the yeah. box after three years, you'll upgrade them? Is that that's part, right. of, part of the yeah, contract? Yeah, that's right, yep, yep. The, uh, one thing I remember is you chose to run, the, you're running the Zen Hypervisor, you're not Zen running server, VMware. Yep, yep. Is that, is, is, has that changed since we've first No, you know what, um, so it's, you, you, can, you, you could use any hypervisor, right? It's not the hypervisor that's important. Um, we've chosen, we chose Zen Server. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, very, very widely deployed in, in cloud infrastructure. No VTACs. Sorry? No, no VTACs. VTACs. Oh, VTACs, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so so um, are there, there are some reasons why, uh, um, you know, some technical reasons why it's a really good choice. Some of, the, some of those cases for um, security, particularly if you're running on a very, very small platform like this. If you think of what we're trying to do, we're trying to pr provide the sorts of systems tools that the big data center providers use to manage that biggest day we we'll do it all here. We, we can't move, if we want to do an upgrade and a, and, a, and a patch, which is what we do, we keep these things completely consistent and completely current when they're in the field. If we want to do that, we can't just throw the VMs off to some spare capacity and run that upgrade. So we have to shrink everything right down. And there's, there's uh, some capabilities that we've been able to do very, very easily in, uh, in, some, in uh, open source. End. But actually, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll follow the market. If people want to run it on you know, alternative hypervisors, that's a validation. Exercise. Nick, has Bath become a tech center? You mentioned your VC back. It's a, it's a really interesting, it, it is a tech center. It has been for some time, actually. Um, because I mean, of the, the university? The, uh, the, the university and, and Bristol. You know, there's a lot of, um, re recently the, the, um, the, the local government there, you know, it's known as a tourist city, right? Uh, they discover they get 4x revenue in tech compared to tourism. And, and HPE's got a facility down in, in Bristol. Bristol right? Labs, that's right. Absolutely so, right. Yeah. Been there. Okay, and to, to, to history of the company, you've been around for how long? You said you venture back. We, you yeah, venture us? back. So we, we founded in uh, 2011. Uh, so we're five years old. The history, that you know, the background of the team. We had a, we also had a successful startup uh, that we we built in Bath and, and exited for you know 400 and something million dollars. Uh, we took VC investment from a ventures firm uh, here in London with offices out in, in the Valley. So we spent a lot of time sort of back and forth. Um, we took a VC round in 2013. How much money did you raise? Have you? Uh, we've raised, so far we've raised about $25 million. Awesome, I just want to be sure of one thing, is you said you were a software company. Now who yeah. is actually running the operations? 
Is it the partner uh, so, uh, MSP? Is it you? So it's, that's a really, a really good question. So I, I think most software companies now are service companies, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you build the software, you deploy the software, but you, most of what you have, so our cloud management platform, guess what, we, we have to run that, we have to operate that. So we have a team who operates the cloud management platform, but it's multi-tenant. So the partner logs in, they see their, their systems, their deployments, they can manage those. We can help take over parts of that if they want to. If they want to curate it, like an Active Directory, um, or, or a, as you mentioned, an Exchange, a SharePoint, a SQL Server, we can take over and operate that for them as long as it fits the standard model. But we can also just give them admin access into that VM and they run it themselves through the cloud platform. So we have an operations team across US, UK, mm -hmm. um, but actually a lot of the time, the partners are wrapping their own services around that capability. So you want to hand that off to the partners though, right. ultimately. Right, right, that, and that's what, that's what they want as well, but they, and, they don't yeah, want to do the, 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 you know, the low grade, uh, you know, like run out, do an install, you know, run a, run a latest service patch, run a hypervisor patch, that's low value stuff, so we just make that automated and part of the platform. Love it, love the innovation, the business model, the, it's fantastic for, for partners. Last question, where do you want to take this thing? Where, where should we expect? So, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to do a couple things. We are going to continue to roll this out geographically, you know, expanding beyond just the US and UK, once we really get the model humming and we, uh, we understand exactly what the MSPs need, because what we found at the beginning was they needed a little more hand-holding than, than we thought. Um, so we'll be expanding geographically. We'll be expanding the product, as I mentioned, um, beyond probably the ML110, which we just announced uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and then we'll be expanding partnerships. So uh, we just recently announced partnership with our, our brethren Aruba to provide uh, the systems management dashboard as part of uh, you know, the applications as well. So um, those are really the three areas that we'll be expanding in, uh, partnerships, uh, location, geographic locations, and uh, in products. So we see a huge future here. Um, and everybody can go to uh, booth 523 in Transformation Area 1 if you're here on site. Um, and get much more information from uh, the guys who really know about this. So excellent, Peter and Nick. Thanks very much for coming on the on the cube. Congratulations. This looks great. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Paul and I will be back with our next guest right after this. We're live from Excel London. Right back. <laughs>